This video will walk through the steps involved in tracking the motion of projectiles, objects undergoing uniform circular motion, and objects undergoing simple harmonic motion at a level that would be suitable to use in a depth study. Firstly, import a video to track. Good videos to use in Tracker will be short, a few tens of seconds in length. You can trim videos using a video editor before importing them into Tracker. If you need to rotate your video, this can be done by right clicking and selecting filters. Bright lighting in your video will reduce blurring um, of the motion of objects in your video, so it's strongly recommended to video your motion outside. If possible, it's a good idea to video motion against a uniform background. The wall here in this video is not as uniformly coloured as would be ideal. Lastly, there's a trade-off between achieving a high resolution in the video and having the camera far enough away that motion at the edges of the frame is not distorted in size compared to motion at the centre. There should be an object of known size at the same distance from the camera as the motion that will be tracked. In this video, I've attached a metre ruler to a retort stand projecting out from the wall so that when I throw the shot put, it will pass underneath the metre ruler. Right click on the blue icon with the one and select new and then calibration stick. Drag each end of the calibration stick to the ends of the object of known length. You can zoom in uh, to ensure that each end is precisely located. Then double click on the number on the calibration stick to set the length of the stick in metres. Insert axes by left clicking on the pink axes icon. For motion under gravity, it's essential to have an object in the frame that is aligned with either the vertical or horizontal directions. In this video, this has been achieved with a plumb bob, a yellow string with a mass at the end that hangs straight down under gravity. This means that even if your video is not quite vertical, it's still possible to align the vertical axis with the vertical direction. You can drag the axes around by left clicking and holding on the origin and moving them. You can rotate the axes by left clicking and holding on the positive X axis. Alternatively, you can set the position and angle of the axes manually by typing values for the X and Y coordinates and the origin of the origin and the angle from the horizontal of the axes. Once you have inserted a calibration stick and aligned your axes, the next step is to set the start and end points of the motion you wish to track, along with the step size. As I'm interested in, the motion, in motion under gravity, I'm going to choose to analyze the time the projectile is in the air. The start position for the motion can be set by playing the video until the desired start point is reached and then doing fine adjustments by stepping forward or back one frame at a time. The start position is set by right clicking on the small black triangle on the left and selecting set start frame to slider. Next, uh, you need to locate the end of the motion you wish to analyse. Then right click on the small black triangle on the right and select set end frame to slider. If there are many frames, you can reduce the number of frames you need to analyse by left clicking on the one at the bottom of the screen. Selecting four will mean that only every fourth frame will be tracked. Selecting three would mean that only every third frame will be tracked and so on. The next step is to track the motion in the video. Under track, select new and point mass. To track manually, hold down the shift key and left click to mark the position of the object in each frame. It can be a good idea to pick a distinctive point on the object. For example, in this case, I can pick uh, the top of the ball in each frame. You can zoom in to make marking more precise. If the background to the motion is sufficiently uniform, the auto tracker feature can be used. We select 
new and point mass, and then auto tracker. Holding down shift and control, we can then click on a distinctive part of the mass that we wish to auto track. We can adjust uh, the size of the search area in which the software will search for the next image of the object. We can also adjust the size of the region that will be searched for as well as its position. We can then click search. Sometimes if the background isn't sufficiently uniform, uh, you have to confirm a match manually. Once Auto Tracker is finished, you can close the window. The horizontal and vertical position versus time graphs are shown on the right. You can switch between tracked masses using the tab at the top. By clicking on the eye icon, you can choose to make the path of the object, uh, that is its complete motion diagram, visible or invisible. And you can also choose to display velocity or acceleration vectors. Sometimes to make these easier to see, it can be useful to change the step size. Here, if I reduce this to four, um, the change in velocity at different positions in the path becomes uh, easier to see. Here, if we add acceleration vectors, you can see that uh, these appear to be the same size and directly down. You can change the variables graphed by clicking the y-axis and selecting a different variable. Here we've selected the y velocity. This data can be further analyzed by right clicking or right dragging and selecting analyze. The data set to be analyzed can be selected by clicking and dragging such that it highlights in yellow. A linear or other fit can be done by selecting Analyze and Curve Fitter. Here a linear fit to the vertical velocity versus time yields a gradient of 9.7, which is close to the acceleration due to gravity. The factor limiting the precision in this case is the extent to which the path of the ball passes directly under the ruler. You can see the effect of slightly changing the endpoints of the ruler on the gradient of the graph. If a larger object, such as a medicine ball, were thrown, then it would be possible to use the size of the object to set the scale in the video. The horizontal velocity can be found in a similar way. By right-clicking on the graph, uh, you can switch to the Analyze window. Here we see both sets of data for vertical velocity and x position versus time. You can change uh, which set of data is graphed by unticking um, some of the columns, again, by um, dragging uh, across the data, you can select the data that you wish to analyze. Here we've got a linear fit, and this coefficient gives us the x velocity throughout the motion. You can see that this remains uh, constant. You can uh, drag these columns around to change uh, which is the main column that is graphed. Additional videos can be imported into Tracker by selecting File, then New Tab, and then repeating the previous steps. For example, we might be interested in how the maximum height above release point is determined by the vertical component of the initial velocity, and so import a range of videos with different initial velocities. Here I have a different uh, throw for my projectile. So I could repeat all the previous steps that I went through and so determine its uh, initial vertical velocity and uh, the maximum height above the release point uh, for this video and compare it to that I obtained for the first video.
we can compare our measured motion to the motion we would expect from a particular force by creating a dynamic model. To create a dynamic model, select track, then new, then dynamic model. Here we'll use a Cartesian coordinate system. It's often convenient to use a point in the track to motion the object to act as a launcher to set the initial value of the variables for the motion. As the velocity depends on the difference between two points, it's useful to use the second position as the start frame for the model to obtain an initial value for the velocity. If there's no force acting, the model predicts that the mass will move in a straight line, as you can see from the red circles. In this situation, as I've used a shot put, I expect drag to be a small effect. I predict zero force in the x direction, and in the y direction I predict that the force will be minus 9.8 times the mass. As soon as I hit return, I can see the new prediction of the model, and it agrees very well with the measured motion of the ball. If the equations of motion of the object are known, then it is also possible to use a kinematic model, and there is information available in the tracker manual on this. Finally, for saving your project, if you have videos in multiple tabs in your project, you first need to save each tab individually as a tracker, so a .trk file. Once you've done this, you can then save the whole tab set as a tracker project file, so a .trz file. There's a space for a description of your project. Notice you need to tick the boxes to include all the tabs for your project. There's a space for metadata. And a space for adding any support files like PDFs if you wish. So this file, yeah, this file will contain all the uh, videos and all the information anyone uh, needs to open your entire project and see everything that you've done. To finish off, in the last two sections, we will look at circular motion and simple harmonic motion. Here I have tracked the position of a wireless accelerometer on a record player turntable. Uh, as before, the graphs on the right can be changed to other variables. Here, for example, theta. The units can be changed to radians by right clicking on the data columns to get a units menu. By right dragging on the angle, uh, you can, like before, do a linear fit by selecting the data. And here, this will give you the angular velocity, which is constant over this motion. I'll create a dynamic model for this motion of the accelerometer using polar coordinates. I can set the start frame of this mass uh, to use as a launcher for the dynamic model. This means that this will populate uh, these initial values of time and radius and theta and initial um, radial and angular velocity for me. I predict that the force acting in the radial direction will be towards the center, so I need a negative. And then I predict this will be omega squared times r, which is equivalent to v squared on r. In the tangential direction, I leave the force as zero. If I then click play, you can see the prediction of the model uh, together with the motion. So for this initial start point, you can see the motion of the model has deviated from the actual position of the mass. If you choose a different start point, because of the variation in where you click to mark the positions, this will give you different initial values for angular velocity and the radius, and this can impact on the predictions of your model. Lastly, I've imported three videos of different masses oscillating on the same spring. As before, I can insert axes. I have also included an object of known length, here a ruler, so that I can calibrate distances using a calibration stick.
Again, I can zoom in to get the ends of my calibration stick at the right positions. And I can double click on my calibration stick to set the length. I can use a different uh, point mass to track the motion of each mass uh, in the videos as they undergo simple harmonic motion. Lastly, I can insert a dynamic model to predict the motion of the masses based on the force acting on them. Here, this would be the spring force.